Moving on to sending loop of Henle. Mannitol is the representative drug of osmotic diuretics. Clinically, we don't use it to regulate blood pressure, like we do with potassium-sparing diuretics, thiazides, or loop diuretics. We take advantage of this hypertonic sugary solution to shift water between compartments of fluid. Mannitol is not for long-term use. Given intravenously, mannitol is a temporary therapy for acute and serious condition. The representative drug of osmotic diuretic is mannitol. It belongs to the therapeutic class of diuretics. Mannitol passes through a glomerulose, increasing osmolarity of filtrate in the proximal convoluted tubule and descending loop of Henle. It actually increases osmolarity in both the blood and luminal fluid. When it increases the osmolarity of the luminal filtrate, it prohibits reabsorption of water and electrolytes, leading to diuresis. As mannitol increases osmolarity of the blood, it attracts water to shift into the blood. In clinical usage, it decreases cerebral edema through this mechanism. Mannitol can be used to treat oliguria, and it can prevent oliguria in acute renal failure. It is also used to reduce intraocular and intracranial pressure. Furthermore, mannitol can be used to decrease cerebral edema and promote diuresis in case of drug intoxication. Lastly, it is used to irrigate bladder during transurethral surgeries. The most serious or fatal adverse effects of mannitol are seizure, pulmonary edema, and heart failure. As being given via intravenous route, this hypertonic solution can induce reactions at the IV site. As the fluid being shifted from compartments to the blood, imbalances of fluid and electrolytes, such as dehydration, hyperkalemia, and hyponatremia can be resulted. Mannitol is contraindicated to patients who are hypersensitive to it. Other contraindications include anuria, severe pulmonary congestion, or pulmonary edema, active intracranial bleeding with an exception of intraoperative craniotomy, severe dehydration, previous progressive renal disease, and previous progressive heart failure. For those who show signs and symptoms of renal failure or congestion after starting mannitol therapy, medication should be discontinued immediately. Mannitol should be given with a test dose. If the patient does not respond to the test dose, mannitol is not to be given. Patient is most likely hospitalized for mannitol therapy. Patient should be educated to report signs and symptoms of pulmonary congestion, skin reaction at the IV site, and other concerns. Monitor vital signs, strict intake and output, body weight, renal function, and fluid and electrolyte status. Monitor central venous pressure and urinary status. Indwelling or Foley catheter insertion as indicated or prescribed. Hourly urine output via Foley is to be measured, documented, and reported if oliguria is occurring. Provide frequent mouth care and give oral fluid as ordered. Do not give electrolyte-free solution with blood. Add 20 ml equivalent of sodium chloride per liter of mannitol solution. Mannitol increases excretion of lithium into urine. When given with nephrotoxic medications, including aminoglycoside and cyclosporine, mannitol could increase risk of toxicity and renal failure. It is not advised to use mannitol with sodium phosphate. When used together, osmotic diuretic can enhance the nephrotoxic effects of sodium phosphate. When used together with mannitol, opioids decreases the therapeutic effects and increases the adverse effects of the osmotic diuretic. Mannitol can affect laboratory test results. It can alter electrolytes levels. It can also alter inorganic phosphorus and ethylene glycose level. 
In addition to monitor laboratory results, other assessment and diagnostic examination should be utilized for better clinical judgment, as these laboratory findings may be misleading. Thank you for taking this lecture with me. I look forward to seeing you soon.